The Commodore 64 was one of the top selling computers in the 1980s. There are literally thousands of fantastic games that we can play. So let's have a go at the Commodore 64. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Commodore 64 is a great computer to emulate. As with most of the old 8-bit computers, the games are very easy to get hold of, as is the emulation software itself. So let's get straight in and turn your PC into a Commodore 64. The emulator we're going to use is called Vice. So if you head across to this web address, you'll come to this web page and here you get lots of information about Vice and it's actually a multiple Commodore machine emulator so it emulates things such as the Commodore 64, the various variations on it, um, VIC-20, Commodore PET and so on. So if we go across to the download link you'll see that there are a number of downloads depending on what system you use. Um, so we're going to download the Windows version from here and that will take you across to a SourceForge download page and then it's a matter of just waiting for that to download and then save that somewhere sensible on your computer. So I'm going to save it into my emulation folder for my Commodore 64 and save that in there. So once that's downloaded, if I just simply open up that folder I'll find then that I have a 7-zip file there. Now, if, if you haven't got 7-zip installed in your computer, you'll have to go and download that. But once you do, you should then be able to just simply open up this archive. And inside there, you will find there is a folder, um, which is this one here. And you simply need to extract that into the area where you're going to save it. So once that's extracted, you'll then have your Vice folder now sitting here. So again, I've got it in my emulation folder, Commodore 64. The actual Vice code itself, if I open up this folder, it's in the bin directory. And you'll see there's a number of executable files here. And down near the bottom, you'll find these um, x64 versions. Now these are the different uh, machines that it actually emulates. So the one we're going to be looking at is the X64SC. Um, now there used to be one called X64 which doesn't seem to be in the downloads anymore um, but the X64C was the one that was always a much more accurate emulation of a Commodore 64 uh, and I guess now that we have more modern machines that then any sort of performance hits for doing that are, are gone. So this is really the one that we're going to be using from now on and you have in then the Commodore 128, you have the Commodore PET and we have down here the Commodore VIC and again we can have a look at those at some other time. But then the X64SC, that is our Commodore 64, so if I open that up and once that boots up we're now sat in front of a Commodore 64. So we've got the computer up and running. All we need now are some games and then having to work out how to run them on our emulator. So let's go and get hold of some games. So there are quite a few places you can get hold of Commodore 64 games but a really good place to go is c64.com and if you go there you'll find there's loads and loads of information here about the Commodore 64 but we have obviously a link to download some games and they're held in alphabetical order so we're going to pick up a game called Euridium, which is a really good side-scrolling game. And you can see we've got a list of games here and in various pages. So if I go on to the second page, and there we have our Euridium. And I can download that. Now when I download that, that is going to come down as a zip file. Uh, and we need to extract some files out of that. So really what I'm going to do in my Commodore 64 folder, and this is the way that I organise it anyway, I'm going to make a games folder. And then inside my games folder, I'm going to create a folder called zips. And that's where I'm going to put all of my downloads. So if I download and save it into there, then I can, once it's downloaded, I can open that up. And if I open up that archive file, I'll then find there's the actual disk image inside there. 
Now, we want to make sure that we get the right files. There are a number of different file types you'll find around for Commodore 64 games. Uh, and really the D64 is the one we're after, or, or a G64. Um, but this c64.com website, that will download them as D64s, which are just perfect for Vice. So I'm really just going to extract that and drop it into my games folder. So if I go back to my games folder then, you can see that I now have all my zips stored nicely inside that zips folder and then my games will gradually build up here as I download them. So I now have the disk image ready to use. So let's go into Vice and see how we actually load that up and run the game. There are a number of ways to load and run games within Vice. Um, and if you're familiar with the Commodore 64, you can go through the load commands and so on. But if you're not familiar with the actual machine, the very easiest way is to go to your file menu and then we can smart attach a, an image. So if we click on that, we then just simply need to go and find our game. So again, I've put it in my Commodore 64 games folder and there we have Iridium. So if I just select that, not, not double click on it yet, but we have then a button down here which is auto start. And that will really just do everything we need to get that game up and running. Now this process does emulate the actual disk drive working. So it will take a little bit of time for it to come through. Um, but just keep hanging on uh, and it will eventually load in for you. So there we have our game up and running. But before we can actually play that, we do need to have a little think about how Vice actually works in terms of keyboards and joysticks. Uh, the Commodore 64 was very much joystick driven rather than keyboard. So we need to work out how we can actually attach our game controllers, or if not, then actually set up the keyboard as a joystick. So let me just come out of this and then we'll have a look at how we do that. So if I go to my file menu, I can go to my reset and I can do a hard reset which has set me back to the very beginning with my Commodore 64 as if it had just been turned on. So first off with Vice, we need to know how the keyboard is mapped onto your computer keyboard. Again, the Commodore 64 used its own keyboard layout and that was slightly different then to our normal keyboards uh, these days. But if I bring up a little graphic here, so this is a graphic, and again, I will I will put this onto the project page on my website. So do make sure you check the links in the description below to get to that, um, which will detail all of the places where you can get hold of games and all of this information about which buttons are which uh, and so on. So on this image here, you'll see that there's certain special keys that were on the Commodore 64, and they're mapped to certain buttons then on your computer keyboard. So the the run stop key is one that you'll need to use quite a bit for your games. And that then is mapped to the escape key. There is a Commodore key, and that's mapped down to your left control button. Um, and then, again, there's another few around here. So, so the restore key is on your page up button, uh, and so on. You'll also see that by default, um, we have mapped the uh, numeric keypad to the various joystick buttons. So you can see here the various direction keys of the joystick are mapped onto the um, number keys. Okay, so again, five and two both act as the down key depending whether you like a full sort of uh, arrows around there or whether the sort of um, the, the, the middle key playing for that. And then the joystick fire button then is mapped across to your um, bottom right control button. So make sure you get familiar with where these keys are. So the important ones are the run stop and your joystick. Or we can of course then plug in our own game controller and map that into our, into our, into our advice emulator. So let's have a look and see how that works. So if we go to our settings menu and then go to settings, you'll see that there is an input devices section here. First of all, when we look at our keyboard, you need to be on the uh, symbolic keyboard and that will then match up with that diagram I showed you. We then need to have a look at our joysticks. Now, when we come to use joysticks, um, it's joystick number two which seems to be the one that most games will work with. 
So at the moment, I've got that set up to be my number pad. And then again, that matches up with the mapping that I just showed you in that diagram. But you can see there that we can change that around. So we can actually have some user defined ones. So again, you can see down here, we have our configure key set A. So if I click on that, you'll see that it lets me then set my own keys for the various positions of the joystick. Um, but again, I can just leave that as numpad. Now at the moment, um, I don't have any um, USB controllers plugged in. Um, but I, if I do, I do need to restart Vice to get it to recognize that. So let me do that and, and see if we can get that at recognizing my joysticks. So I'm gonna come out of this. I'm going to close down Vice. I'm then going to restart my Vice emulator. And now if I go into settings and joysticks, I should now find that I have a USB gamepad. And if I select that and close that, if we look down the bottom corner here, we have little joystick indicators. So if I move my joystick around, you can see now that I am getting it doing my four directions and my fire key. Um, so really, as long as you have either got your keyboard mapped or a controller mapped, we now have the uh, joystick up and running. So let's get the game back up and running again. So I'm going to attach my disc, my Iridium, and auto start that, and then let that load. And once the game's up and running, uh, with the Commodore 64, quite, quite often it's either the run stop key, which of course is the escape key, or the space bar that actually gets us through these screens. So I'm gonna press the space bar on here, and then we have it coming up. And then if I press space bar again, it takes us through then. And again, we have, for this particular game, we have some instructions. And as it says there, we have our space bar if we want to read the instructions and our run stop key, of course, which is our escape key, which will get us into the game itself. So if I press escape, that should then take us into our actual game. And again, space again. Uh, what's this all about here? So uh, let's go for high score and let's just reset the high scores. And that should now load up the actual game itself so we can actually play. So there we go. So if I press a, a fire button, I think, for this one, and that should take me in, and we are playing. And not playing very well at all. But you get the idea, so we now have our game up and running, our joystick is working, and we can go off and we can now start playing all of our Commodore 64 games um, whatever way we want. Okay, so let me just come out of that. So that should give you enough information about Vice to get hold of games, bring them down, make sure you've got the right file format, load them into Vice, and then play them using your joystick or keyboard. The only really other key which you need to be aware of then is, is to get full screen. If I do Alt and D, that takes me to full screen mode, so you can get rid of the borders and the windows and so on, and then Alt D to get back again so that you can get access to the menu system. So that's your PC now set up as a Commodore 64, and you've got access to all the games. There are loads more things you can do with the Vice emulator, and there are a number of file types which you haven't talked about yet for tape uh, games and so on, but we'll do that in another video. Make sure you check out the project page for this video, um, links in the description down below, and make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bar to make sure you get access to all the new videos as soon as I do them. So have fun playing with your Commodore 64, and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, 
please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.